Hello, good afternoon. So I'm back now. I mean, after a while. So good to see you here again. So what I have decided uh, to do to start chapter five. I think we have completed chapter one and chapter two so far. So we'll not go to chapter four. We'll jump directly to chapter five. Once finished, then we'll go back to chapter four. So I mean, this is just introduction. So what I will do in this chapter I mean I, I mean basically I mean for the time I mean basically to take time into account and that we have uh, I think lost around maybe two weeks or three weeks so I've decided to record uh, I mean the material and the class for chapter five so I mean this is the recording of chapter five and this is uh, chapter five you can call it chapter five dash part one I mean hopefully you will like this method once I finish with it, I think then we can go back live to I mean, chapter 4 using uh, Microsoft Teams. So this is my plan. Hopefully we'll be there on time. Okay, so let us start with chapter 5. So basically chapter 5, the title of it is called Cognitive, Cognitive Engineering. So what is meant by cog I mean, Cognitive Engineering? This is exactly what we'll be discussing here. This is a very important topic. And this is the most, uh, I mean, important part of this course, which is called human-computer interaction. So we have a human here. So we have to take that into account when designing interfaces, such as websites or, uh, let's say, websites, applications, mobile applications, devices. So we have something very important to take into account, it's cognitive engineering. So without going into details now of the slide, so what I have prepared, I have prepared something, I mean, some notes, Hopefully you will like it. So, I mean, within the notes, I mean, if you follow the mouse, uh, I mean, uh, cursor or, or let's say the mouse movements here. So what I've done, I just want to make it very simple to you. Within, uh, I mean, computer information processing, we have, I mean, three elements, input, then processing of information, then output. So when you speak about input, so, the, so there is a data. I mean, uh, speak about data, we'll go into a, let's say computer then that data will be processed once processed then I mean we got output so the same principle could be used here so this is called the human information processing system so this is what called human information processing system or approach or whatever you want to call it but it's called human information processing system so I mean again we have input we have a human this is his brain and then we have output if you go in details, speak about the input, the input usually gathered by the five senses. So we have, uh, I mean, I'm, uh, we have the five senses here, vision, smell, touch, and, uh, and uh, the, I mean, the fifth one I forgot. Uh, uh, okay, we'll, do, we'll discuss that later on. So we have five senses here. So these are received as input to the human. Then within the human itself, there is a brain. So the responsibility of brain is to process the information that you receive from five senses. So when I speak about processing, so I speak about these things here, thinking, reasoning, decision, making, problem solving, whatever. So I mean, a number of activities happening here, so we call it processing. Then we have output. So once information processed, then will be sent back to the brain. I mean, accordingly, according to human, we take some actions. I mean, the action could be, I mean, done in the form of voice, waving, language when he speaks, typing something when he laughs, I put here the heck, writing, eating, I mean, uh, doing things, I mean, smiling. So, I mean, this is in summary, well, I mean, the components of a human information processing system, or basically a component, support, whatever you want to call it. When we Go in details here about the memory part of this human information processing. So we have three types of memory. I think we discussed this in the class. So we have sensory memory, we have short-term memory, we have long-term memory. Within the book, it's written two types of memory, short-term memory and long-term memory. No, but actually, it is, I mean, we have three types of memory. And this is a quiz uh, question I'm saying to you from now. So the question could be how many... I mean, what, how many types of memory a human system has? So you could say three, not two. So sensory memory, 
So we have an input coming from five senses. I mean, hearing, vision, uh, smell, touch. I forgot what I have written here, the fifth, the fifth sense. So usually, I mean, this takes around two to three seconds and unlimited view. So, so basically, when I look out of my window, I mean, from home now or from the class, I see many things outside here. What I see, houses, uh, cars, I see trees, and I see a lot of things. So this is what we call it sensory memory. But when there is an attention, or we call it focus, so the thing I focus on will be moved to the short-term memory. And this could occupy from five to nine items. So let's say I'm watching out now. I see there is a tree and there is a moss next to it. So I'm giving an attention and focusing on this one. So this will stay in my mind for five to 20 seconds and, and short term memory could occupy, as said previously, five to nine I mean, items. So this, so this will stay for 20 seconds, then it will go because I mean, I'm not using that formation anymore. So I focused on it and I lost it, that's it. So it will stay here, but we have something called long-term memory. So for example, when you revise for the exam, and let's say for test one, so so what you do usually, you have, I mean, book or you have slides, so you go back home and read and read and read and memorize, memorize. So we have repetition here, rehearsal. So the information will, will be sticked in your long-term memory, will be saved there. So this is what I mean, encoding into your long-term memory. So it will be saved there. At the day of exam, you will retrieve the information from long-term memory and you will save and, and, and you will use it and you will keep it in the short-term memory for the exam day. Once you finish the exam, information gone. So this is so these are the three types of memory and long-term memory is has a huge information. But the important element is here is repetition and rehearsing. Without that, I mean, it will not go to the long-term memory. Let's go, uh, why it is very important here, that the HCI designer has to take the informa human information processing system into account when designing uh, interfaces such as website, mobile applications, devices. So let's go back to the slides. No, this, this is another one explaining the same, sensory memory. Uh, short-term memory, long-term memory, then you, you then you retrieve it. I'll skip this one. I will go to the slides we have here. So I will just go to the. I will go to the. Okay, human information system, human information processing system (HIP). So we have two elements or two parts of it. We have memory. We explain the memory. So here we have working memory or we call it short-term memory and we have long-term memory plus sensory memory. We have as well processes, three types of processes, perception, cognition and motor. So what is meant by so, so what is meant by perception? We spoke about the human when he received an input so received it from five senses so we call it perception. So here vision Taste, uh, taste is the fifth, plus smell. Uh, what's happening next, then, then, um, then, I mean, the information will go to the human brain or basically where the thinking is happening or cognition. So it's happening, so thinking equals to cognition. So there'll be a number of activity, uh, activities happening, thinking, decisions making, problem solving, learning. So this is what we call the cognition part of processors. So once, uh, I mean, processing happening here, then we are moving to the output part of the human. So we said, I mean, there been output, but we call it motor here. So what is meant by motor is converting cognitive decisions made here or cognitive processes made here into actions. The actions could be, as said previously, voice, movement, speaking, typing on a keyboard, laughing so this is what we call it i mean motor so this is i mean in brief what is meant by human information processing system there should be an attention if you speak about moving it between memories if there is no attention then it will stay in the sensory memory and gone after three seconds so this is in very short about the 
about the human information processing. Let's go back now and see what, I mean, we have definitions with, we didn't cover. So we have cognition and cognitive psychology and cognitive engineering. I mean, again, when you go back to this, I mean, PDF file, I think we'll find it. It is called supporting material for chapter five handwritten notes. So what is meant by cognition, information processing, mental operation, intellectual activity? In practice, what, what does it mean? Thinking. So cognition means thinking, remembering, reasoning, problem solving, learning, decision making, critical thinking. So anything happening in the in the brain. So we call it cognition. So what is meant by cognition psychology? The study of how human, we have arrows up, think, remember, reasoning, problem solving, learning, decision making. Okay, now moving to the cognitive engineering. So what is meant by it? It's very simple now. Application of cognition, cognitive psychology in the HCI design. Very simple. So application of whatever we have learned in the psychology when we, de when we design interfaces. So speaking here mainly about two things when people interact with technology. So, so we speak about fit, fit between human and between the technology. So fit when I'm using computer, fit when, when I'm using applications. So we you speak about user experience and use it, usability. So this is what we discuss in chapter one and chapter two. So this isn't simple. I mean, what is meant here and what's covered by this part. Okay. So this is, part, I mean, okay, we finished with human information processing system. Let us move to something called, I mean, performance. So when I said performance, so performance of human information processing. So, I mean, again, we have two, three slides. So what I've done, I've summarized it here again. So when, when you come to this one, so when, when you come to this one, let's say here. So we have performance. So what is meant by performance? I mean, performance, we have two elements in it, speed and accuracy. So speed is associated with processors. I mean, the one part of human information processing system and accuracy is associated with memory. Again, there's the second element of human information processing. So what is meant by speed, rate of processing data? What is meant by, I mean, accuracy is the capacity to store and retrieve information correctly from memory. So when, so when I store something in my memory, then when I retrieve it, what is the accuracy rate of that storage and retriever? It's very simple speed. I'm speaking about, uh, I mean, the input, the five sensory. I'm speaking about uh, the human when uh, he's processing information, thinking, reasoning. I'm speaking about motor. So when he take, when he took, when he take action, such as laughing, typing, speaking. So, this, so this is what, what's mean by speed. So rate of processing of data. So these are the two main elements of performance. So, I mean, again, these two are considered as constraints or barriers of human information processing system. So rate of processing data, storage capacity, let's store capacity, retriever of data, the accuracy. So these are all barriers or constraints for human information processing. So performance is, let's say we have, we have factors. So the factor is speed of speed of processing data and the accuracy of storing and retrieving information in the memory. Uh, I mean, for example, I've just put an example here. So, so basically, when you see one on a screen, let's say on laptop screen, many many small screens, let's say within that screen, so you will lose focus. So, which screen is to focus on? I mean, the better example. I mean, for guys, when you go to sport cafe. Or basically when you see a TV studio. So within that TV studio, you will see maybe maybe 60 or 70 screens. So you will lose focus which screen to focus on. So so this is what we call it speed and the accuracy. So I mean I put here sport cafe. Why it is very important to understand performance? Designers, when they design interface, they have to take into account the performance, I mean uh, elements such as speed and the accuracy. Uh, I mean, we spoke about that. We have some solutions. 
I mean for constraints so let us go back to the slides so we spoke about performance we spoke about performance okay we have some solutions I mean that could be taken to account to overcome the barriers or basically overcome to the constraints that we spoke here above so I mean the first one is called automatic behavior we'll see here automatic behavior control behavior then the next slide we have processing of images processing of verbal information so we have four solutions so let's go back and see them here so what does it mean by, by, by automatic behavior so let us see the definition behavior cut I mean that uh, okay fast and cognitively and demanding so not a lot of you not, not a lot of resources are demanded when you work on it control is the reverse so it is a slow and demanding a lot of I mean let's say I mean utilization of memory and processes so okay let's see in details so automatic behavior I mean simple example you see the, the question if I mean when I mean when I ask you this question three plus four how much I mean you will say simply seven two plus five you will say seven one plus four five so you will see how it is quick so this is very quick and less cognitive resources are needed less thinking is needed less of memory is needed so this is what you call it automatic behavior when we go to the control behavior it is basically I mean the reverse so when you speak about uh, let's say big numbers now I mean 24 plus 57 it is not just easy I go and do it so I have to think about it which means I'm using more I mean uh, resources here so I'm thinking more I'm using a lot of memory now so let's make it more complicated 24 plus 57 plus 600 plus 500 minus 200 so this is a long formula now so it is complicated one so I mean it takes I mean a lot of resources from me a lot of thinking a lot of utilization of memory so this is what we call control behavior I put examples here different examples when I ask you to enter 100 random random number in an excel sheet random number in an excel sheet so we'll go and put 5 6 7 12 blah 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 so 100 numbers. it's very easy I mean very simple okay when I speak about the control behavior when you when I ask you to write a function in an excel sheet complicated function to calculate revenues of a country take into account the GDP and uh, I mean a lot of factors into account so with this one it will be a bit slow because you will be using a lot of thinking you will, you will use will be using a lot of memory so this is what's meant by control behavior number three processes processing of images so usually images are stored and are saved in my mind as objects so when I look I mean outside no I mean when I look at images I mean for example outside so I see a mosque car I see a market I see I mean petrol station so this image what I've seen out will be saved in my mind as one object so when I retrieve it tomorrow I mean I will retrieve it as an image I think what I have seen yesterday what I have seen ah, okay there was a mosque a car and petrol station so this is using less cognitive resources less thinking less of memory okay I think it's very clear uh, finally processing of verbal okay, let us see here processing of verbal information okay let's go back here so uh, when, when I speak about verbal communication so so let us say I mean we have a question when safar never safe or or basically what I have done last summer which country I have visited what I have done so I mean a personal student will say okay we have booked tickets we have booked hotels uh, we, we went to the airport by taxi so we landed we took a cab so we, we, we went to the hotel we stayed there for a night the next day morning we woke up we went out we had we had breakfast we went I mean around the city we have the, we have seen the touristic places we, was, we, we, we went to some restaurants we played some games for the kids we went out until night and then we came back and slept so 
So, so this is, let's say, just one day of trip that we have done. So when I retrieve this information, I mean, one person now, I mean, one of you would say, Muhammad said, or not exactly fully you remember, I have said 100 person, but you'll say, yeah, Muhammad has booked a ticket. He went to the airport, he visited the country, he landed, he stayed in the hotel. Next day morning, he went around and he saw, I mean, a number of places. He went to restaurants and he went back and he slept. Because I'm saying it is very easy for me, but the point here that when I retrieve it, it will be retrieved, retrieved as a sequ sequence of activities. So that's why it's called uh, when processing of verbal information will be processed as sequence of activities. So this, I mean, again, result in less use of, less utilization of cognitive resources, less thinking, less use of memory. So we have four solutions for this, I mean, constraints. Hopefully it is easy for this. Okay, so let's move. So we have something now a new called cognitive strategies. So what is meant by cognitive strategies? Plans of mental actions. So what so what does it mean? What does it mean? So let's go back again here on this uh, note. So cognitive strategies, plans of mental action. Okay, what does it mean? Specific methods people use to solve problems or to take decisions. Okay, let's Let's, let's take this example. I, I mean, uh, 3 plus 4 is equal 7. So when I ask you th th this I mean, question, you will say 7. So the processing of this formula was done in your mind. So we call it in mind or memory. So this was your strategy, plans of mental action. So, it, so this is your strategy. So you have solved this problem, I mean, in mind. Some lazy students, will, I mean, uh, I mean, will use their hands. For example, they will say, one, two, three, four, uh, five, six, seven. Ah, okay, so they will say it's seven. So this is what, what we call, they will use finger. I mean, we are very lazy students, but um, this equation is simple. So that's why I think most students will use this way. But if we go on, I mean, about, about this, I mean, equation, so 26 plus 8, I mean, some of them will do it in their mind, some of them will do it on a paper, like what have what have done here, some of them they will use calculator, if it is a long, I mean, formula again, you will use your mind, option 1, or option 1 you will use your finger, or basic, basic option 2, option 3 you will use formulas. So let's say each person has different way of solving problem or taking actions in life. Skip this one, just come here. On daily basis, the human, uh, on daily basis, human take thousands of decisions. I mean, on daily basis. I mean, most of these decisions require judgments. <coughs> so basically, I mean, I mean, what, what options we have to solve to, or basically to, to take um, decisions on daily basis. One option, number one, think deeply. So we said, I mean, processing, thinking, reasoning, justification. So this is option one. Option two, quick decisions. Usually human in life prefers to take quick decisions. So this, so this is, I mean, simple. So human usually want to take quick decisions in life. He doesn't want to spend, I mean, waste, I mean, a lot of human, let's say human information processing resources such as processes, processors, and memory. So they want to take usually quick decisions. So this quick decisions, we call it here heuristics. So this is number one, I mean heuristic. So what, so what, so what does it mean heuristic? Take quick decisions in life. So let's see, see here, take quick decisions. So we, so we call them as well mental shortcuts or rules of thumbs, which means for default, by default, you will take the quick, the short, or the short, uh, shortcut, or short way. <clears throat> I mean, speaking details about heuristics. So basically, you will take quick decisions in life based on past experience. So I have examples here, both in Arabic and English. So I mean, the famous example when you go out during the weekend with, I mean, with, with, I mean, with, with your friends. So the first question will be where we should eat tonight. 
which restaurants we should go. So, so, so what's happening? The practice will be moving around for one hour, two hours on road. You will be fighting. Which one? When? 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 Which one? Which one? Which one? Okay. So, I mean, after a long fight, what, what will happen? So, what will be the answer? The same restaurant we go usually during the weekend. نفسل ما تعمل في كل مرة نروح له. So the same restaurant we go during the weekend. So as simple as it is. So let's say, I mean the famous example would be, uh, we went to Coco's, so let's go to Coco's. Coco's nice food, so we went to it last week. We all like it, so we'll go to it. So the same answer will be repeated again and again and again every single week. So human want to take here quick decision based on past experience. Okay, we have another example. What to wear every day? Use default. So we have a guy who, I mean, who has difficulty in wearing I mean, clothes. So every morning, I mean, he's waking up and he's thinking what to wear now. So what he's deciding at the end, he is basically, I mean, wearing the same things again and again and again. Kilium, he doesn't want to, might be our he doesn't want to spend a lot of cognitive resources. So this is another example. Uh, we have your doctor habits are difficult shay. I mean, we have a let's say a doctor, let's say a medical doctor. So whatever he says to you, you will believe in him. Uh, you have a politi I mean politician, you will believe in and believe in whatever he says. So this is I mean as simple as it is. We have some good examples here. So so we have so you you drive your car on a road. And you see a nice car next to you. Okay, let's say, I mean, Ferrari car next to you. And there's a guy, I mean, who's driving it. So what you would say here, ah, he's the owner. So the first impression will be, okay, he's the driver. But I mean, actually in practice, what's happening? No, he's not, he's not, he's, he's not the owner of the car. He's the driver of the car. The owner asked him to take the car to the I mean, service center. Okay. So, I mean, this could be right always or could be wrong. I mean, decision you made <coughs> based on this quick decision or might be our rather. Okay. You walk in, I mean, somewhere, let's say in Sar, you will find the person, I mean, uh, I mean, standing in front of his big compound. So, the first impression that you will have that, oh, He's the owner of this big compound, but actually no, he's the the gardener walking outside and waiting for the owner. So I mean, okay, heuristics. It's always. It is basically always. I mean, it is always leading to, let's say, quick decisions in life without wasting a lot of cognitive resources. This is as simple as it is. In most of the cases could be right, but some cases, I mean, the conclusion might be not what you expected but something else like the owner of the car or or let's say the owner of this big house okay so i mean when you speak about the hci elements of heuristics so we spoke okay take quick decisions in life based on history or based on previous experience so let's say i put some examples here when you see the system updates the window update you will see this sign which indicating that it is an update stage. Or basically you will see the percentage of update, 20%, 30%, 40%. So you will feel comfort that there's something happening in the back. Let's say the undo and redo, I mean, uh, signs in Microsoft Word. So these are shortcuts. I mean, when you do mistake, you will go back or basically you can move forward. Uh, when error, I mean, done in somewhere in application, usually you will have a sound or you receive a sound, you will hear a sound, okay, you have done a mistake or maybe, I mean, uh, let's say screen will pop up saying to you, okay, you have done a mistake and, and the solution is this. So this is a shortcut. So there's no need to think you have done a mistake. There is a screen saying to you, you have done a mistake. There is as well solution, what to do next. <coughs> Later on, uh, I mean, when you have drop down menu, when you have, uh, I mean, multiple choice, uh, I mean, menus and uh, applications or interfaces, these are giving you, let's say, short shortcuts 
of doing things. When you go to Google, I mean, uh, direct into the search bar. So this is a quick way of, I mean, going to the search bar, search bar and putting a question. In. So this, this is saving, I mean, a lot of time. These are all shortcuts. These are all shortcuts to make your life easy when you deal with interfaces, when you deal with, uh, let's say, uh, devices, or when you deal with mobile applications. That's why I call them here shortcuts. When, I mean, we have another example, taskbar of the wind of the desktop PC we have. So these are all example of heuristics. Let's go back to the slide. So, so we have here, I mean, uh, one, one part or one element, or let's say one uh, cognitive strategy. So one strategy is heuristics, which means take uh, quick decisions in, in life based on past experience. When we speak about shortcuts here, we speak about quick ways, we speak about, uh, I mean, within the, the, I mean, the design or within a website or within an interface, and we speak about shortcuts, short element, uh, I mean, shortcuts, let's, so we spoke about some example, examples previously. Uh, number two, we have metaphor. Number three, we have mental model. So mental, uh, so metaphor are uh, speaking about familiar concepts in life. So I'll just make it very sim simple. So let's say desktop icon. So this is, I mean, familiar, I mean, object or familiar, familiar concept. So number one, when you see the cut or copy, I mean, metaphors or objects within Microsoft Word. So when, I mean, so let's say Caesar and uh, uh, basically both of them have signed the cat and copy so when you when you see them you know that okay this is for cat and this is for copy when you see the brush within uh, microsoft word so you will understand that oh, okay this is for i mean uh, copying the previous let's say features of this text so these all familiar objects so we call them metaphor for example cat and coffee uh, copy uh, we speak about desktop icons. So these are all yeah, familiar concepts. Okay. So when you say, okay, so, th so this is as simple as it is. So the message here for SCI design, always try to use metaphor. I mean, always try to use familiar concepts within your, within your, let's say, interfaces, whether a website or a mobile application or a device. Okay. Moving to number three, the strategy number three is called mental model. So mental model, I'll just make it very simple. So when you see the trash bin, I mean, within your PC, I mean, so the trash bin means, okay, this is a recycle. So if you want to delete any file, so that file will go there. So when you see the trash itself, when you see the trash itself, I mean, it is taken from real life example. It is used in a computer, okay, but it is usual, it is taken from real life. So, so when you see that bin, you will know that this is for, I mean, when I delete files, the files will go here. So this is what's meant by mental model. So whatever I use in my designs, in my applications, in my interfaces, so always focus on mental model. I mean, let's say activities or let's say concepts that match my that match my mental model. So the so, so the clear example is, I mean, when I use the trash bin. So this is very clear that this is matching with the real, I mean, word. So we have a real word, I mean, bins. So the same concept, same metaphor is used within interfaces. So when whenever people will see trash bin, they will know that this is for. I mean, deleting and for keeping the deleted file here. What I want to show you, I mean, what I want to show you here, I mean, something clear. Let's see here. Let's, let, let me just open, let me just open to you. I mean, two things here. Okay. I'm, I'm just speaking about Intel, Intel models. Let us see what's happening here. Okay. Uh, we have two folders here. See this folder is uh, for the slide and this is 
and a folder. So this is what we call it mental model. You see here I can move with the mouse this file and I can put it here in this folder. Okay. So this is taken from the real life. So holding something by hand, holding something by hand and keeping it, keeping it in the second folder. As simple as it is. As simple as it is. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm just taking a pen in real life and keeping it my second hand. So this is from real life. So this is represented in, I mean, in the computer world. I mean, by these, I'm, I'm, by these two, by these, let's say, by these two folders. So, I mean, again, I took the pen, I put it my other hand. So I'm taking the file and I'm putting it here in the second folder. So this, so this is what, what we call it. I mean, this is, I mean, what we call it. One minute. So this is what we call it mental model. Whatever you use in your application, whatever you use in your this interfaces, I mean, I mean, always, I mean, always use, uh, I mean, things which are um, close to the real world. Or basically, I mean, uh, you can understand it very easily. So because it's close to the real world or basically the mental model. Okay, hopefully you like this one it, and it is very easy to understand what does it mean. Okay, so let us move now. So we've got something called the complexity of HCI. So when the human computer interaction or let's say the interface become complex or becoming uh, complicated, this is the answer. I, I, mean, I mean, as simple as it is, when it uses a lot of cognitive resources. So we spoke previously when we, so when we said, okay, when I use, when I use a lot of cognitive resources, for example, more thinking, I mean, more of use of memory. So, I mean, it become complicated and become complex. So the objective of the HCI course, objective of the HCI design is to make things simple and not complicated. So, I mean, this is exactly what is mean, what is meant by it. The human resources needed for interacting with computer to accomplish a task. So we have a task. So human resources needed. So this means processors and memory or simply human information processing. So we speak about task usually. Okay, so within the HCI, we want to make it simple. So we want to make it less, less, I mean, not complicated. So th this is one, this is one goal of <coughs> the HCI course. Okay, so I mean, let's say here, uh, I think we discussed this as well. Uh, com uh, I mean, complexity, within complexity, we speak about task and we speak about the human and we speak about computer. So how human is, accomplishing this task using a computer. If, if it is accomplishing, I mean, in quick way and easy way, so we, we can say it is flexible and easy and not complicated. But if it takes a lot of cognitive resources such as processors and memory, then we will say it is complicated. So as simple as it is. Uh, for task as well with a human, uh, for task with, um, with a human, I mean, it, um, it depends. Some human might accomplish task using computer very easily. I mean, some people, I mean, uh, might be, I mean, very difficult for them. So we speak about human capabilities and limitation. So we spoke about this and I think chapter one, we spoke about human capabilities and limitation. Uh, that's why we say the same task can be of different complexity when supported by different system. Uh, the same task on the same system may be different complex, complexity of different users. The more the resources needed, the higher the complexity. So as simple as it is. Okay, so I, th I think this is what's meant by complexity. If you see this diagram, we, ha we have something here. We have some arrows. We have some arrows. So the task usually represented by intentions and evaluations. 
So I will keep it aside. I will come back to it later on. Okay, I will skip this one as well. The Gulf of execution, Executions and Evaluation. Okay, let us speak about this model. This model is to reduce, or let's say the purpose of this model, we call it uh, seven Normans, seven stage model of user activity. So we have seven stages. One, two, three, four, skip this one, five, six, seven. So we have a model. So these lines represent intention and these lines represent evaluation. If you go back here, intentions and evaluation in a human and computer. So this is exactly the same one, human goals and this is the computer. These are intention and these are evaluations, okay? So we call this one Norman seven stage model of user activity. What's the purpose or, or, or let's say, what's the purpose of this model? I mean, basically we have two things. One is for task analysis. Number two, predict user performance and HCI activity. Why? To achieve two things. We always say we want to achieve two things, usability and user experience. So the full, let's say, the key desired results of this model are two things. I mean, achieving usability and number two, user experience. So want user to be satisfied with it, which means you'll, you'll be using it a lot. Okay, let, let us go back to my, I mean, whatever things I have, I mean, I was writing earlier, my notes. Okay, predict user experience, so used for predict user performance, used for task analysis to achieve usability and user experience. Okay, let's go and discuss the model in, I mean, uh, in more details. We have seven stages. We have seven stages. Let's see this one. We have seven stages. Goal, one, intention, action specification, execution. So one, two, three, four. Does the computer part ignore it? Then we have perception, interpretation, evaluation, five, six, seven. This part we call it Gulf of Execution. This part we call it Gulf of Evaluation. So Gulf of Execution means the gap between goal and the computer implementation. And Gulf of Evaluation means the gap between computer evaluation and evaluation of achieving the objective or no. And we call the above part, we call it mental activity. And the below part, we call it physical activity. Okay, let's go back and see what does it mean exactly. So we have goal here, number one. Uh, I, I think I think there is a mistake here. So this is number one. This is number two, not one. This is two, three, four. And, and just ignore it. There's no number here. So one, two, three, four, nothing. Five, six, seven. So this is the physical part or basically the internet. So let's say the goal is number one, stage number one. Stage number two is intention to act. Stage number three is sequ sequence of actions. Number three, execution of action sequence. So referring to the previous one. Then we have the physical. So there's a computer element or the HCI or the interface might be my mobile phone or might be my laptop. Then we have, I mean, perceiving, <clears throat> perceiving status of the physical system. Okay, I mean, I mean I'll just explain it. So we call it perception to just make it simple. Then we have interpretation of the perception. So referring to the previous one, then we have evaluation of the interpretation. Okay. We'll take a quick example. So this is Mohammed, me. Okay. I mean, I have question in mind because I like Argentina. So my question is that when was the last time Argentina won the World Cup? I think this is, this, I'm, I'm a, I think I think this might be good for guys or for uh, for the guys in the class. So Metal Argentine, Akhl Marab Fazib Kassel Alam. Okay, so this is my goal. So number one, this is my goal. So my goal my goal is to find the answer for this question. When Argentina won World Cup last time. Okay, so intention, phase number one intention. So okay, my <laughs> intention 
means how to solve it. I, I mean, how to find the answer for us for this question. So the simple answer, let, it, it will be, let's Google it. As simple as it is. So this is the intention. Let's Google it. So, okay, this is a Google, it's a search sign. Okay, then sequence of actions. So, so these are the planned actions, not the actual action. These are the planned actions. So what I will do to achieve <coughs> this question, I mean, basically I will go to Google. I mean, this is my action. So what I will do, I'll open my laptop. I will, I'll speak about plan. I will open browser. I mean, then I will go to google.com. Then within that search, I will type in, in the search bar, in the search bar, when Argentina won the World Cup last time. Then I will click enter. Then wait for the page to load. Then view the results. So these are the planned actions to achieve my intention. Okay, let's move to, let's move to stage number one, two, three, four. Okay, let's move to stage number four. Follow the planned action. So this is the actual implementation of these actions. So what I will do, I will open. Now I speak about actual action. I'll open my laptop. I'll open browser. I'll go to google.com. I'll type in the search bar my question. And then uh, once 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 I finish with it, I mean once I finish with it, I will click enter. I mean I'll wait for the page to, to, to load, and then I will see the answers. So as simple as it is. <clears throat> Follow the planned action. Now I'm speaking about this part. The physical part is what are the results of the Google search. Here I'm speaking about PC system internet. I'm waiting for a system response. So this so this refers to the physical part. Physical part, the part. So we call it the physical activity or this one, the physical system in between. Okay. So, okay. So now, I mean, I put my question in Google. I received the answer. So what is the answer in Google? So the answer is the last time and last time Argentina won World Cup was 1986. So this is what we call it here, stage number five. Lua, perception. Perception of the answer. Lua, Adi. Perception of the answer. So the perception here is Argentina won the World Cup last time. It was 1986. Okay, so stage number five. Then I will move to stage number six, interpretation of the perception. So let's let's see here what I have written. Number six. Hmm, no way. Oh, I'm shocked. Oh, what I'm seeing here, long time. So this is the interpretation of what I have seen here or the perception. So this so this is stage number six, which is the interpretation lower. But I mean, after that, we have the evaluation, last stage or stage number seven. Well, here, the evaluation. Okay, let, let, let us see the what is meant by evaluation here. I mean, evalu, evaluation means, okay, you see the, the result you have found here, interpretation of the perception, evaluation of the interpretation. So you post the question, you receive the answer, you, you did interpretation of the answer, you say, hmm, it was a long time ago. Now you, you will evaluate your answer with your goal. Okay, did this answer, did this answer achieve your goal? Your goal was when Argentina won World Cup last time, did it achieve it? I mean, in this question, yes, this, yes, this answers, this answers my question, which means I have achieved my goal. So, so this is in very simple, I mean, the seven stages of Norman's Let's say normal seven stage model of user activity. This, this is very simple, I believe, not that complicated. Here I speak about internet, I speak about Google. Google is a good example or a good system that bridge both gulfs, gulf of executions and gulf of Lewathania, gulf of I mean, gulf of evaluations. <coughs> okay. So let's say Gulf of Executions and Gulf of Evaluation. 
when you go back in the slides I mean to this slide that I have skipped so let's see here Gulf of execution and Gulf of evaluation so we call it the physical world or the physical activity no no the, the mental activity or psychological world and, and the other part we call it physical world I mean we called it here mental activity and physical activity so this is so, I'm, so I mean, this is exactly, I mean, the same. So there is no different psychological world and physical, physical world. So the gap between user goal and computer implementation, the gap between implementation and evaluation of the answer by the user. Okay. So this is very simple. I mean, simple. Ex I mean, explanation of this. Okay. Okay, let us continue now. Uh, we have the second, okay, what I'll do, I'll just skip fit and complexity for later on. I'll skip this one as well. Multiple intention, and I'll jump to GOMS. So we, so we have a second model. So the first one, I mean, you called it uh, seven, Norman's seven stage model of user activity. The second model, we call it GOMS. So GOMS refer to goals, operators, methods and selection so okay let us go back here and, and see what they are so this is GOMS so goals G for goals O for operators M for methods S for selection so I mean I mean again I mean again GOMS and no, Normans both are used for predicting user performance both are used for task analysis to achieve usability and user experience, user experience. Okay. So with this, within this one, let's see the goal now. So let's say you are using, I mean, Battleco service. You have problem with your, I mean, with your mobile. So what you want to do here? You want to complain to Battleco. Okay. So the goal here. So the goal here. What are the user expected to achieve in a big picture? Okay. J just ignore this. So your goal here with this problem in your phone that you want to report a product issue to Betelco. So you want to complain to Betelco about this problem you are facing. So this is your goal. I mean, speak about operators. Operators mean motor action. We spoke about motor action in the beginning that the physical activities that will be conducted by human once processing is completed or cognitive action by the user so cognitive actions thinking reasoning justification solving problem so you have problem here with your mobile phone you want to you want to report it to Betelco so you have different ways of reporting this problem to Betelco one is pick up the phone option number one option number two dial up the call center number or basically you can uh, open a phone a computer or uh, normal feedback form or basically write a letter I mean option five could be live chat live chat with Betelco so this is what you call it operator now method so I'll just make it simple process or procedure that describe how to achieve the goals using the operator so you want to complain that you are, you have a, a problem with Betelco Okay, you have a different ways of doing it. Now, here, so let us do it. Report a problem that, I mean, that complaint to Betelco via mobile phone or via phone or via call center or basically online phone or basically by sending email or by live chat. So these are the different methods you have. Phone, I mean, online phone, uh, we speak about writing a letter, we speak about live chat. So we have four options here. Let's move to selection. So for selection, you will do evaluation of these four methods and you will see which one is better for you, which one is achieving your objectives. So let's say a calling is time consuming, but sometimes faster way to reach resolution. Okay, live chat, for example, might be quick come to solve problems, good for documentation, and good to take quick actions. Uh, let's say sending email is good for documentation, 
but, but I mean, you might not receive response at all from the telco. So you have to evaluate each option and based on the results of your evaluation, you will choose the best method that is achieving your objective, making your life easy, making it simple to you. Not a lot of cognitive resources will be utilized such as processors and memory. So based on this, you will select the best method that is not using a lot of cognitive resources. Hopefully, hopefully this is very simple, very easy example to you to understand. <coughs> okay, within within the slide we have, within I means going back to the slide, we have slide number one. So we, I think we have covered it. We have covered this one. Okay, this one I will. I'm, this, uh, this one you can ignore it. This is basically for text editing, for for I mean for programming, for uh, I mean debugging, for compilation. So just ignore this one. So I don't want to com complicate it to you. <coughs> Going back to what I mean, what uh, we missed. I mean previously we have two concepts: fit and complexity. User activity with multiple intentions. So what I've done, I've made them very simple as well. Let's go back to the su supporting slides here. So within this one, within this one, within this one, you will see an Excel sheet. You have good fit and misfit. So when you want to add some of these numbers, 24 plus 22 plus 21. So with the mo mental model with the real life model in life. So what you will do, you will write 24, I mean, in a column, 24, uh, 22, 21, then, then you, I mean, in, in, in real life, without using computers, you'll put them under each other, and you, and, and you'll find the answer. So this is what's happening in real life. So the same example from real life, I mean, will be done in computerized, I mean, presentational computerized way of doing things. So, uh, mental model. So this is what you do in real life. This is the computer presentation. So this is the computer presentation. So this is exactly doing the, th the same thing you will do in real life. So putting three numbers under each other, 24, 22, 20, and 21. Then, I mean, we could, within Excel, you have formula, you are summing, uh, basically highlighting, I mean, from 22, 21, and press enter. So then the answer will appear here. So so this is good fit because uh, between the user mental model and computer presentation. Okay, because when you see this, you see dot lines here, which means these are the three number you wanna add. And this here, you will see the formula. So sum A1 to A3. So this is A1, A2, A3. So you know exactly what's happening here without going and see this part. So from this one, you will know that you are adding A1, A2, A3. So this is a good match between mental model or real life model, and the computer model. Speaking about misfit, so just I mean, imagine you don't have these highlights within Excel. You just have, I mean, a number here, which is the which is summation of of these numbers. So I think it will be. Uh, can be set one. Will be four, six, seven. Yes, so it will be sixty-seven. So you will see four numbers. I mean, under each other, twenty-four, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-one, and then sixty-seven. Okay, without seeing any of these dotted lines, and without even seeing the formula here, and without even seeing any formula here. So what you have, you have four number four numbers under each other. So you have no idea what these numbers are for. So you'll get a bit confused I mean, what's going on. So this does not, I mean, represent what's happening in real life or the mental model. The only way to see what's happening here is to come here and see, I mean, when you press this number, let's say it's 67, you will come and see here and you will say it is sum this formula of A1 to A3. So you only, the See this one here, not here, only here. So what does it mean? So you will go and map it with the Excel sheet. You will say, okay, there's a formula of summation A1 to A3. You will come and say here, uh, A, this is A1, A2, A3. Then you will understand that, ah, uh, this is the summation of these numbers. So 67 means the summation of this because there's no dot lines. 
there's no formula you will see on on the excel sheet you will not see this note as well so so we call this one misfit between the mental model or the real model and the computer model so this will be a complicated and complex model and and, and the previous one will be a simple model so this is what's meant by uh, what we said i mean earlier fit and complexity so you have one more left user activity with multiple intention uh, with multiple intentions we said here when we spoke about the seven i mean seven normans seven stage model of user activity when you spoke about intention my question was one question only when argentina won world cup last time so it was one intention so, so, no, so the goal was when argentina won the world cup last time so the intention was or let's say how to solve the question was let's google it so there was only one i mean way of solving it which is by googling it so we spoke about one intention but with, with this one no we speak about multiple we speak about multiple intentions i mean we speak about multiple intentions so let's say this example here we have shop which is selling a product so he has a volume of 500 pieces of that product the price for each is 1.99 dollar uh, the cost there the actual cost of the company is 0.54 dollars uh, what they do usually they do I mean a discount of let's say I mean used to be 10 percent the new price will be I mean 1.77 so the price of this one is 1.99 but after the discount the price is 1.77 so with this one they make profit again the profit is positive so once so when when they sell these 500 pieces so the profit again will be 700 something thousand dollars so they are making good profit so the exercise here so the exercise here is so the exercise here is to go and examine profit sensitivity to discounts okay what does it mean okay i think okay what does it mean it means that when it means that when the profit will be negative so that so uh, i'm a simple answer when 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 the profit will be negative okay so this is my intention number one so the intention number two how to do it is i mean physically how to do it increase discount by one person so i'll do it one one so it is it was 10 so increase so it was 10 and i'll do 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 within the excel sheet how how it is done physically i'm in position pointer on discount okay go to the discount i mean field okay then increase it this time is 11 okay so i have to see the profit still positive okay uh, then physically i have to type i mean 11 then i have to go and see the cycle again observe 11 and and then do interpretation i mean is that uh, achieving my my goal achieving my question no it is not answering my question I have to go back and increase it make it 12 again i have to move some same cycle I have to do evaluation achieving yes no okay 13 14 15 16 until i see profit is negative so i have two intentions here so i have to increase discount until my profit is negative how it is done increase the discount by one percent so i have to repeat it again and again and again physically i have to go to the field and have to increase it one by one by one by one so this is how it is done physically so this is what's mean by i mean multiple intentions i think we have completed this one i think we have completed i think we have completed user activity with multiple intention what is left is one thing errors so what is meant by errors usually usually we, it means that okay we have something we have a rule we have something we follow so any deviation from that rule so we call it error so any deviation 
from something any laws and any regulations any let's say computer hardware there's a process we follow any deviation from that I mean process we call it errors so this is simple definition of errors so we got three types of errors skill based errors rule based errors knowledge based errors so I'll just make it simple to you so so when you speak about skill based errors which means basically a skills mean basic basic a human is a good I mean a basic a human is good in something let's say when you go to the I mean university on day to day basis you live in head so so what exactly you will be doing you will wake up okay you will take your car okay you will follow a route which is a fixed route you will follow on daily basis taking you from head to University of Bahrain so the same route you follow on daily basis so we call it this is because something you use on daily basis so let's say one day for some reason you use a different route so now we call it deviation I mean from what you what you do on daily basis so this is what we call it skilled base I mean error we have a rule based error I mean rule based error is very simple let's say you have uh, laws you have regulations you have something procedures to follow if you don't follow them which means there's a rule based error which means deviation from laws and regulations and processes okay for the third one knowledge based behavior or knowledge based error for example we have uh, I mean some people let's say the consultant I mean when they do things they are uh, do everything they do consultancy based the information they have in mind uh, because they are good in that field For example accountant they are good in accountant or well, economics they are good in economics say hey, so when they solve problems and they do they provide consultancy services they do it because they are good in that so if something happened bad I mean to let's say to their cognitive resources to the memory or to the processors which means there will be an error which will be they will not be performing as usual so this is we call it knowledge based error I mean speaking about the categories I mean skill based error is automatic behavior because it is not consuming a lot of I mean cognitive resources because I mean you wake up in the morning you know which which route to follow to reach universal Bahrain rule based I mean behavior no this is a control behavior you have you have to follow rules and regulations and procedures which means it's not just come and wake up and okay follow anything no you have to know the laws and regulations you have to follow them uh, I'm, I'm, I'm the same for and knowledge base is a bit highly controlled behavior so it's based on knowledge and mind based on experience based on what they are doing so this is very specific knowledge that those people have so these are the three I mean types of errors or basically that have I mean in mind okay let us move here and and speak about deviations I mean example of why errors happening so skill based behavior error rule based error knowledge based error so when you don't follow the same route to come to the university on daily basis because something happened I mean something happened the road maybe an action maybe an accident maybe an accident or you were I mean thinking of I mean over thinking of something or maybe because you were lazy in that morning you slept I mean for a while and then you got busy and you rushed into doing things and you went out you, you saw I mean traffic you followed different rules so I mean I mean things could happen and we call it a mall for example I mean in attention slips or I mean omissions happening or something urgent happening outside or which basically have over attention repetitions so I mean let's say uh, I mean some people are over thinking let's say Wuswasibul Arabi overthinking they're complicating their life they're com complicating everything surrounding them so those people usually they do a lot of mistakes that doesn't mean that they are perfect they are genius they will do everything perfectly they I mean overthinking usually I'm a result in making errors so that's why when you see 
when you see this one here, you see this one uh, in, in, a in attention, the mall could be um, something because they were lazy or something happened or something happened on the road or over attention. What's what I mean, they're overthinking. Okay. Uh, I, I mean, for rule based, we have two, I mean, good rules or we have bad, uh, good practice of, okay, let us see them here. I mean, for rule based behaviors, we have misapplication of good rules or misapplication of bad rules. Okay, so I mean, what does it mean? What does it mean? Let's see them here. So, uh, no, I'll go back here. I'll go here. This one maybe this one fits so that. So, misapplication of good rules. So, I mean, we got system which is not functioning well. For example, hanging up. So, we have a PC which is hanging up. So, when it is, I mean, when you want to shut down, it doesn't shut down. When you want to restart it, it doesn't restart. So there is something happening. I mean, there's a mistake happening, maybe, maybe hardware issue or maybe software issue. So this is what you call it, misapplication of good rules. Okay, then application of bad rules, for example, when you do bad coding, when you do bad coding, I mean encoding wrongly, okay, this, uh, uh, when you write in any program uh, wrong formulas, which means that the output will be wrong, uh, when it is bad programming, um, let's say the person, a student, is a bad programmer, so he, I mean, uh, written a program, the program is bad, which means this will result in errors. So we call it rule-based errors. So that's why it's called the application of bad rules. So this is the second type. The third type, we call it knowledge-based behavior. So we spoke about the consultancy, the consultant. So I mean, consultant usually, I mean, they do everything based on the knowledge that, that they have there in mind, uh, competency, their experience in life, their expert in different fields, for example, accountant, economics. So if something happened to them, then they cannot focus, they cannot retrieve information, they cannot do consultancy job. So it's something related to cognitive resources, limited cognitive resources. The problem is not well understood. Uh, we have some examples here. Uh, confirmation bias. I mean, problem with complexity. I mean, problem with casualty, which means they don't understand the problem well. They say, yes, we are expert. We know it. But when actually when they do the job there, which means they have no idea what's going on, which means there's their problem with their cognitive resources. They will be utilizing a lot of cognitive resources, for example, processors and memory. So these are the three types of errors, skill-based behavior errors, rule-based behavior errors, knowledge-based behavior errors. I think with this one, I think with this one we have completed. I mean, you can ignore it because, I mean, this is exactly what I explained, I mean, that slide. I think we have covered chapter five, uh, I mean, uh, smoothly. I think we have discussed all points here. Hopefully it is clear and you like it and simple. So what I recommend, you have the slides. So these are the, these are the slides of chapter five, the official slides. Uh, what I've done the slides, you will see my, I mean, uh, some notes I've written here to you so that you understand it. Uh, some notes here I've written to you I mean, in red, so with emphasis, and so, so I mean, this will make your understanding I mean, smooth and easy. Again here, I mean, again here. So basically, this is one source of, I mean, revising or memorizing or, or preparing for chapter five. Then you have the supporting slides. I mean, this will help a lot because, I mean, this will help a lot because, I mean, explain things and, smoother and simpler way. So this is the Norman's activity model. And this is the fit and complexity, uh, multiple intentions, multiple intentions. And here GOMS, explain about GOMS here, the three types of errors. Uh, you have as well this notes because this, I, I mean, this is very important to you. I mean, so that you understand chapter five easily. 
uh, this is posted as well in both uh, Microsoft Teams. When you go to the files within, uh, I mean, uh, within, within our class, when you go to the files, you will go to the class material, you will find it there. I think it's called supporting material for chapter five dash handwritten notes. So I think it's around four pages. This will help you a lot because this, these are the practical notes of chapter five. So when you focus on this one, you will understand chapter five. I mean, as I mentioned in the beginning, the full course is about understanding. It's not about memorizing. It's not about, okay, memorize. I mean, what is written in the slide and go to the exam. In the exam, there's nothing from memory. So we'll not ask you to define, write, what are the elements, one, two, three, four, no. We'll put some practical examples, and from your understanding, you will go and solve them. Okay, let me just, so you can see me. So the purpose of chapter five and the full course is not about memorizing I mean, the slides at all. It's about understanding the content of the slides. So that's why I'm putting my best effort so I've developed for you these notes, handwritten notes, and I've given you this supporting slide with practical examples, because the exam will be about, it, it is practical, I mean, question, or well, it is practical exam, whether midterm or final exam, it is practical. It is fully based, it is fully practical, and you can refer back to the previous students who have finished it last semester. So the full exam with a, midterm exam or final exam was practical. So you have to understand the content of the slide so that you can answer the questions. If you memorize, you will not understand it. I'm, I'm sure about that. We have many students who memorized it. I mean, word by word, when they went to the midterm and final exam, they couldn't solve any questions. I think, uh, some, I think some students, they, I mean, jump from A to C and some of them from A to B minus. And they were complaining that, okay, we have solved it. No, actually, you didn't solve it. You have just written something that doesn't relate to the question. So you have to understand the content so that you can answer the question. So as simple as this, so I did my best. I mean, I did my best to explain chapter five to you smoothly and easily. So hopefully with the three sources of information, the slides and the supporting slides, and the supporting handwritten notes, so when you go and see, when you go and read them, hopefully you will understand chapter five very easily. Now we have this online training for online education. So this video, so you can watch it again and again and again and again. So this, hopefully this will make your life easy. Num this is number four here, yeah, okay, number four. Number five, you can um, come back to me at any time whether in Microsoft Team, or you can send me an email, or you can call me or WhatsApp me. If you don't understand anything, please come back to me at any time. Okay? Hopefully you will like it. Hopefully this online education, I mean, fulfilling our objectives and making our life easy. I'm basically, this is my fair experience in recording, and I'm happy about it. And I don't see a big difference between this and the class. And I. And in contrast, in contrast, I see it direct and to the point. So without wasting a lot of time here and there. So everything is done, I mean, smoothly, easily, direct and to the point with the practical examples. Hopefully you will like it. And uh, this is chapter five because we have, I think, close two weeks. Within those two weeks, I should have covered chapter five. So I have covered now chapter five. I think we are back on track now. So we'll start our sessions, live sessions from next week uh, in Microsoft Teams. We have a lecture tomorrow on Thursday, 12th March. So tomorrow's lecture is about the project and the assignment. So we'll be focusing more on the, on the assignment and the, pro and the project. But from next week, we'll be back fully by using this Microsoft Team and online learning. I think with this we are back on a track, so we didn't lose anything when I recorded because I have decided to record chapter five. Because if, if I have done chapter five uh, mid life, which means I would I will lose maybe I mean one or two weeks and explaining it to you. 
So now you have chapter 5 recorded. You can go back to it at any time and watching it. Hopefully you like it. And I'd add my best. Hopefully you like it. If there's anything, please come back to me at any time. Okay? And I wish for you all the best. Bye.